Hey. Hello, and welcome to Turtleneck Table Talk, the podcast that seeks insightful conversation while promoting the growth of our community. I'm your host, Devin. (laughs) It's been a while. (laughs) And this is Austin. And we are excited for today's episode as we continue with season two, where we highlight the future of Wichita. That's right. Yeah. And for that reason, uh, we got on a great guest. So if you asked me to name one of the most innovative ideas for a store in Wichita, I would have to say our guest store comes to mind immediately. Uh, for that reason, along with many others, I'm excited to welcome on the owner of Fartelex, Andrew Shinstock. Hey. Welcome on. Yeah, welcome thank on. you guys. I'm yeah, glad sure. to be on with you guys and excited to talk to you guys about running in Wichita and yeah. maybe even a little bit about the Olympics since it's oh, we're in the middle of it right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's been a lot of crazy events, Dude, a lot of athletics right. has been a thrill for I know. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've been able to just go on YouTube and just watch all the highlights of yeah. All the Olympics, that's been awesome. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah. So, I guess uh, you mentioned my store, and you know, I yeah. guess I'll talk to you a little bit about that. I love the Yeah. 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 So, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, my shop, Fartlex Running Shop Smoothie Stop, is down in Delano. Uh, we're the best place to check out running gear, running shoes, get smoothies, but also to join in on some group runs if you're ever, ever looking for people to run with. We're a totally nice. locally owned shop. Just, it's just, you know, my. My baby, basically. Ah, yeah. And I'm sure you guys are probably intrigued by the name a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I, I had mean, to do some research. I have to say, for people who aren't runners like myself, you know, an avid yeah. runner, but like for people who aren't familiar with running, where did the name come from? Yeah. So the the word fartlex, its literal translation is it's a Swedish word. Literally okay. translates to speed play. Speed play. Um, you know, uh, the ru- the endurance community. They know it as a type of workout that they do, mm-hmm. whether it be runners, bikers, or swimmers. They all do fart licks at some point. It's, it's when you do continuous exercise with some speed work just thrown in randomly. Hmm. It's very unstructured. So a lot of high school runners know it as a thing that they absolutely despise. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so basically, people with endurance backgrounds see the term. They recognize it on the building. They get a chuckle. They come in. they like, oh, hey, okay. I know this thing. Yeah. Everybody else hopefully just gets their... Their attention, like, why do you name it after a fart? What's was that his last name? (laughs) What's going on? That's my initial. The childish name is is just part of the fun, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's cool. I didn't even think about that having like a attraction to all the older. That's cool, that's a great idea. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's that's where the name comes from, and yeah, and the shop has been. Two and a half years in now, and I was about to say because you opened it kind of recently and you opened it. During like the pandemic, so or? was that the tell? So remember when they were having all those issues with um, supply chain stuff? Mm-hmm. I yes. opened it in the heart of all of that. So getting getting brands on board was very tough to do. And honestly, some there's some sad reason why the shop opened too because we had another shop in town called First Gear. It was down in Old Town mm-hmm. there yes. for 31 years. Yeah, fortunately, pandemic plus the supply chain stuff just made it really tough on them. So. Gave me the opportunity, but it was sad to see a uh, old Wichita icon go away. Mm. Yeah, but you know, I'm happy to be servicing the community now. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Because yeah, yeah. before that, because you were working at Freddy's and you had, mm. were even like a district manager and been with Freddy's for like 15 years before you decided to go after your passion and open up the shop. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, I was. Been 15 years with Freddy's Frozen Custard. Um, Great company to work with, another locally owned company. That's why I stuck with them for all those years because I enjoyed being part of the, being a part of a local company. At the end of my career, I was up in Kansas City running uh, six or seven locations up there. But when the official sale happened and it was no longer totally a local company, I felt it was time to move on from that part of my life and chase down my own passion, which is. 100% 100% on the running side of things. And so timings, timing all kind of worked out for me in that way as well. But that's yeah. great. Yeah. And that's one of your passions, running. So yeah, it's great. great. You could just great could incorporate. But where did that passion start for you? Started in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Uh, yep. Okay. Got into, cr- my sister did cross country before me. So I used to go to her meets. I thought it looked really cool. And then when I got to sixth grade, I started running cross country in school and Never looked back, just embraced running. Ran through middle school and high school. I did, was not a collegiate runner. Never had the 
the talent on the running side necessarily. Oh, <laughs> I just just have the passion, not the talent. But I, I love being a part of the running community. I love running. Just anything to get you outdoors, enjoying the weather and being active, clear on the head, all that stuff is just great. Yeah, a lot of benefits. And as an adult now, it's it's even better than it was in like middle school, high school, because Wichita has such a great running community too that I love to be a part of and interact with. As you guys have met in the past on previous podcasts, you met one yeah. of those, at least one of those members of the old yeah, running Janet. community. Janet, yeah. yeah. She's very much uh, all in on it, and everybody in the Wichita running community seems to know her at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet. She's yeah. a character. <laughs> she yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was uh, great to have yeah. you. So, yeah, it, it's great being a part of Wichita's running community and, you know, there's so many organizations in Wichita promoting running that j- it just f- fuels the passion and a lot of cool things happening in Wichita's running community right now, too, really? including some uh, uh, borderline national champion type Ooh, high school runners. I'm okay. not sure if you guys know a kid named Clay Shively. Mm, can't say no, that I do. He just, he just graduated from Trinity High School. Okay. Amazing high school athlete. Ran a, I think his PR in high school for the mile was like four almost flat. Like wow. he was really getting close Jeez. to getting under four minutes in that mile, which will only be the second time in Wichita history that will happen. Only like 30 times in American history has happened. Really? In high wow. school to do it. Of course, do you guys know the first high school to ever do it? Is it Jim Jim Ryan? Jim Ryan. Jim yeah. Ryan. Okay. One of our local guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 East High graduate did it back in the 1960s. Was the first one to ever do go. it as a high school. Wow. Of course, he went on to win some Olympic gold medals and set the world record in the mile too. So, yeah, Wichita's got right. some good running yeah. legacy as well. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, cool to see some young guys living up to it. It's I mean because we got Clay Shively who's been the talk of the town, but we got some other young great runners coming up yeah. too. You're gonna get Clay some NIL deals here. He's already got soon. one. Oh, he does. Oh, oh my goodness! Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some Bartlex deals. Yeah, he's, on that. his NIL deals with New Balance. So that's he's, wow. He's, yeah. he's in like high school. Legit. Yeah, I didn't. Well, realize, he's, I didn't he graduated he now, but he had it in high school. Yeah. Oh, really? Gosh, I didn't, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That is so sick. Yep. It, would that be something you'd ever consider? You know, getting a Fartlek sponsorship. Ooh, uh, I, if if the store thrives, yeah, I'll yeah, be, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> These days, it's, I yeah. maybe just a smoothie <laughs> here and there, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Free smoothie voucher. Yeah. <laughs> Fartleks ain't necessarily thriving on that level. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, you got the smoothies. You got yeah. the 3D scanner. You That's got right, the clothes. Yeah. Some cool right. stuff. Yeah. Could you kind of tell us a little bit about what makes your shop like so special? Like what are some special features, mm-hmm. things that you uh, have, products, whatnot? Yeah. Uh, well, first and foremost, we got, um, we got knowledgeable staff who can definitely understand people's uh, needs. That's super important. And get them into the right thing. And we also are not going to ever upsell on things that I know other places push heavily that honestly are just there to make money mm-hmm. so one of those things i so let's start with our foot scan so we got a foot yeah. scanner that tells us all kinds of information about your feet these foot scanners at most places also then will turn around and push product on people whether it be insoles specific shoes whatever else got those features disabled i just want to know that- about the foot and then i talk to you and figure out what your actual needs are okay because okay. um most people do not need those special expensive insoles for the shoes. Really? All the other shops are going to be pushing them just because, hey, it's another 70 bucks they can make. It's true. Me, I'm just going to sell you what you actually need because I want you, I just want, I want you to be as affordable as possible and, mm-hmm. you know, as comfortable as possible. And you, most people, those insoles end up bothering the foot more than helps. Oh, them. really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But there are, don't get me wrong, there are people who need them, and I got the insoles <laughs> there for those who do. <laughs> yeah. But you won't ever have me, I won't ever push it on you. Um, so, yeah, we, we got the foot scan, so we know what you need. We got the knowledgeable staff who can direct you to what you're actually looking for, whether you're somebody who wants the responsive shoe that's quick off the ground mm-hmm. because you got, because you're trying to set a PR, or if you just want something to keep your legs feeling fresh. You know, yeah. we know exactly which shoes can help you with that, too. Yeah. And, of course, we also know how to help you avoid various types of issues or at least we can coach you along the way of how to avoid things like sh- shin splints, which a shoe won't fix, but it can help. Mm-hmm. Uh, plantar fasciitis, which no product you can get by will fix, but it can it can help. Mm-hmm. Um, and those things, and that's the thing. I'm not going to lie to you about our products fixing those problems because they don't. 
most running pain does not fix by shoes. It's fixed by load management. Mm. Load management is is the key. And I'm not going to upsell to upsell to try to try to fix those for you because it won't. You just got to go. learn how to listen to your body and adjust your running accordingly. There you go. Yeah. That's where the knowledgeable staff, staff comes in. Right. Yes. <laughs> and a non-corporate staff who's just in it for the profit, you know, such yeah. as a lot of my competition entail. There you go. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that kind of yep. like, dissuades some customers. Yeah, it, it, it does. And honestly, I lose customers too because some people want to be sold that those lies. They want to really? be sold the yeah. idea that, hey, this is going to fix all my problems. And when I tell them I, I'm not going to fix those problems because you can't buy your way out of a problem, they're like, yeah. well, I'm going to go find a place that will tell me that it's going to buy me out of the problem. Which <laughs> it, it sometimes works because sometimes, you know, it is just the placebo effect too. Yeah. So some people can buy themselves out of it just because they convinced themselves it did. Feels like an American capitalism, you know, story <laughs> right there. The, yeah. the heart of that right there. Yep. We but, can't, uh, if you can't fix your own problem, just buy your way yeah, out of it yeah, right there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But, uh, this makes my red, white, and blue soul feel good. <laughs> but yeah, no, but that 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 that's comforting to hear, and I, I I'm sure the Wichita running community he hears this and they're like, oh, let's let's go there, let's get yeah. the shoes that we need. Yeah, so that's got to be comforting. Yeah, because I think it's really important because a lot of times with people too, and what it sounds like your staff is really great about is a lot of times people don't really know a ton about running as well. Like mm-hmm. there are a lot of times, like I remember when I first got into running that I just went into the store and I was just like, Hey, I need shoes. Yeah. Yep. Can you help me out? And I had no clue about like the different types of shoes. I didn't even know like the difference between street and and trail running or anything. And so having that knowledgeable staff is like very key and having people that are not just trying to upsell to you, but just trying to really get to know what your problems are and just try to figure out what shoe and what things are going to be best for you, for your goals, I think is super refreshing to hear. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yep. That, yeah, that's that's what we go for. Because ultimately, what I want to see is just people keep to keep running. And yeah, enjoy running, and for the Wichita running scene to continue to get better too. And it has been. You, and, you've and been there, so. Yeah, Wichita's running scene has had definitely had its ups and downs over the years, and the pandemic hurt a lot of cities' running scenes. But mm-hmm. the starting to rebound. Prairie Fire's numbers are regrowing, which mm-hmm. you guys aren't familiar with Prairie Fire. It's Wichita's premier. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. big biggest marathon we got. What Great date hat. is that? Uh, this year it's on October 13th. Okay, this should yeah. come out before that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we don't know. <laughs> I think it will. So we'll promote the Prairie Fire. Yes. Let's go. It, it's really cool because it's also uh, corresponding with Open Streets Douglas this year. Oh, So really? they're going to have the marathon oh, and then what? immediately open up street, street, Open Streets. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, Douglas will be closed off for a while, but yeah. that yes. is a cool little <laughs> correlation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I, I think that's going to be an awesome partnership because – not to dig on old Wichita festivals, but I do think Open Streets is the future of Wichita festivals. Not to dig on Riverfest a little bit. Oh, but oh, I think yeah. I didn't know we were throwing shots at Riverfest. We're but throwing we shots know, at Riverfest. We can, Fest though. We can, we can yeah, absolutely we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just personally think <laughs> Open Streets is the future of it all. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. Yes. I, I went to the Douglas one last year and got my little electric scooter and cruised down. It's yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Open Streets is a blast. I mean, yeah. it's just so simple. And it's inviting, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, for so sure. I love that Prairie Fire is coordinating with no, them now. Smart. Yeah, yeah. We just take some pride in our young Wichita <laughs> City. Yeah, it's not that young, I don't think. But that's cool. Yeah. yeah, good to hear. So, how has it been taking your passion of running and transferring it into a business? What yeah. has that process been like? It's been been uh interesting to say yeah. the least i mean it's been, it's been educational because the more to know about the business side of it I, I learned from my customers as much as i learned from researching from the brands that i bring in because i'm always hearing about what works for my customers what doesn't and what needs they have and all that so it's been interesting because it's made me a better runner just learning from my customers too and and what they what they're dealing with and so turning the uh, passion into into you know the shop has been it's been educational. It's made me more passionate about running because mm-hmm. I'm like obs- it's obsessive these days about it. Yeah, uh, just learn and just hearing about just hearing from the customers, also the the plays, the races they go to, and the events they're a part of too. Just gets you more excited because just learn how much more there is out there that 
when you're just out there running on the side of the road, you don't know about everything else happening in the world. So being part of the shop has, and opening the shop has just opened all of these other avenues of what's out there. So it's made it more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it is yeah, cool. Yeah. Have you have you used your Freddy's managerial uh, skills <laughs> <laughs> incorporated into the business or? A little bit. I think that's a little, a little bit, bit. Yeah, it's very different managing a running shop, yeah, the singular mm-hmm. running shop, than managing. I'm sure it's a lot nicer. Multiple for you to restaurants yeah. where yeah. it's always yeah. chaos because restaurants are they're predictable too, yeah. Compared to a running shop, because you know you got your lunch rush, your dinner rush, mm-hmm. you know exactly how many people are almost showing up there all the time mm-hmm. because it's people eat and they eat consistently and they follow <laughs> the schedule. Yeah, running shop, you just like, hey, it's nice out today. I feel like running. Yeah. Now I'm going to go buy some shoes. Then two days later, because I realized the day I ran that day. I wanted nice shoes. I I needed better shoes. (laughs) So running just comes in these random waves. and It's not like seasonal at all or anything. There's some seasonality to to it, but it's really not. It's not predictable at all. (laughs) It's, you know, I'm starting to get that cross country seasonality to it. Oh, okay. But even that, it's like that's spread out over weeks and it's like random when they show up. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah, figuring it out. But yeah, no, the skills really don't transfer at all. <laughs> <laughs> to answer the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's what I wanted to know. So, well, good I wish they did a bit yeah. more. Yeah. yeah, which is completely different industry. Yeah, it is. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, one, one's food, and just a big part of my job now is managing, you know, retail inventory, you know, different product lines and stuff, while one is just making the same product over and over again so you know it's just different yeah yeah where do you see this uh this business going in the future do you have some uh big plans for it to grow to grow along with the wichita running community um some events possibly yeah i possibly i mean i've got all kinds of ideas that i'm always thinking about but it's it's hard to really know for sure which ones i'm going to pursue until i see how how things are flowing because once again it's a tough business so as long as as long as I'm just barely getting by, I can't get too ambitious. <laughs> but I would love to be a part of putting on more events. Um, but we've already got so many great events too. It's like I don't want to take away from the best ones. Mm-hmm. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, I'm not gonna lie, there are a few events that such there, we got some out of town events, some companies from out of town who come in and put on really bad events and then mm-hmm. skip town with the money. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to they're overcrowded already, so I want to see those ones go away before sure. before I try to put on even more. So oh, I, yeah. so my goal right now is promote the good ones we have, mm-hmm. so that way they thrive, yeah. and hopefully it pushes. That also helps push people away from the not as good ones, mm. because we do got some great ones. Just to shout out a few of them, just in case yeah, anybody's yeah, sure. wondering sure. which events to check out in Wichita. Obviously, I always say Prairie Fire is the premier one yep. in town. They got that the full marathon, the half marathon, the five mm-hmm. k. Twice a year for the 5K and a half. Once mm-hmm. a year for the marathon. They got spring and fall. Um, Turkey Trot's a great one in November. That's a good one, yes. Good 10-mile one. It's been around for 40-plus years. Oldest race in Wichita. Oh. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, still still a great one. Put on by the same people who put on Prairie Fire now. Yeah. They bought yeah. it last year. Um, Say Grace on Thanksgiving Day is the biggest, most competitive 5K mm-hmm. in town. Mm-hmm. So if you mm-hmm. want a competitive 5K... Say grace is the way to do it. Start your Thanksgiving off right. There you go. Yes. There you no, go. A great one. A great one that's coming up next month is a Race for Freedom. Just a good charitable one for oh, ICTSOS, cool. which is a nonprofit that helps deal, uh, helps with trafficked individuals. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. And it's a, it's a great race, too, put on by. Put on for good cause, great people, mm-hmm. all that. Oh, some other great races we got are the, uh, is the Youth Horizons Sun Run. Every okay. Easter week, yeah. weekend around Easter every year. It's we one of the old ones, too. It's probably the most competitive 10K in town at Sergio County Park. It's a fun event. So those are some of the best ones. Those, If you're looking for races, those are some of the best ones. Then there's a lot of other great ones, too, yeah. I'm not listing right now. So if you want to find out which are the best races and which ones are the best to go to, just come by Farlex and I'll let there you know. There you go. Yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's really <laughs> nice double yeah. plug there. Yeah. 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 I, I know which races are good. I know which ones aren't. So if you can't decide, because there's so many. There's so, yeah. Yeah, and, and most of them were just money grabs from out-of-town mm-hmm. companies. So I want to push people towards the ones that are supporting our community. And all the ones they listed there all support our community. Mm-hmm. So And those other great ones that support the community too. But 
I can't list them all. Yeah, <laughs> can't. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them because we do have a growing running community here in Wichita. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of a nationwide thing too. I've seen a lot of like Instagrams and TikToks about people joining run clubs yeah. just to like build a community there. So I think that's cool. The, I just don't like running, so I'm not. Gonna <laughs> run no, and Wichita yeah. does have a lot of great run clubs too, and they are all definitely moving in positive directions. So one of the biggest run clubs in town. Is run Wichita? Mm-hmm. Is that yes. you guys heard of those guys? Yes. Yeah, the nonprofit group. They just had a big revitalization last year, where the old guard, who were in their seventies, stepped down, and a new guard stepped up and took it over. Um, and run Wichita is great because they put on three group runs every week. Oh wow! So mm-hmm. shout those out every Tuesday. You can join them for a track workout at the Independent School at seven o'clock. Cool. Every Thursday. You can join them, I believe, at 6 o'clock. I have to look it up. Run Wichita.org. Um, <laughs> uh, t- Thursdays, it's a pub run. Okay. Go for a run, grab some drinks after. Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> Saturday mornings, they got their long run, which long run's different for everybody, so they always meet up and they discuss as a group, hey, who's going this far? I'll join you, you know, kind of thing. So that's early morning Saturdays, and then... Beyond Run Wichita, then you also got Saturday Morning's Exploration Place Park Run that I want to definitely shout out to because that's one of my favorite events that we got going. Mm. Free mm-hmm. timed 5K every Saturday morning. So you don't have to pay to do your 5Ks. You just go to Park Run. Run a 5K? Was that? And you just run, run a 5K? 5K, yeah. Just run a 5K. Yeah. Run a 5K. Start it. Can't, you just go to the Exploration Place. Find the group. Start it off. Great, great group of people. They get about 100 people a week right now. Oh, so wow. It's a... It's doing well. It's thriving. I have to say, yeah, I've yeah. seen like some of my running friends do it and everything, and so yeah, it's oh, yeah. good time. So yeah. yeah, so we're really appreciative of Curtis Whitted and Adam Smith who who had that up. So Adam Smith being the president of Exploration Place, okay. mm-hmm. yeah, he's yeah, done yeah. a lot of work to help make that happen. Yeah. Curse, we got to deal with this construction right now. Oh yeah, Exploration yes. Places. It's- the sidewalks and all that stuff because yeah. I was running by the river the other day and I was like, oh, I gotta yeah. go through this, you know. It, it's gonna be good for Wichita, but be good, yeah, because they yeah. got some fun things that they're working on, yeah. Yeah, like that huge uh, water park thing, or like what was it? I don't even, I can't remember, but I, I saw remember, it on Wichita yeah, Life it, email, yeah. yeah. So, a lot of people are familiar with a place called the Gathering Place in Tulsa, it's like okay. it gets rated like the best park every year in every oh, cool magazine in America. And basically, Exploration Place is trying to one up that. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So that's what they're that. building there. So awesome. Oh, cool. Because I remember awesome. Lily Wu, yeah. Mayor, yeah. talked a little bit about it when she was on the podcast. Oh, uh, sweet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wichita's just, it's just yeah. growing. A lot of good things Let's happening. Go. Yeah. Let's go. Proud to be a Wichita <laughs> right now. Yeah. You, and you grew up, you grew up Wichita? I grew up in Wichita, yeah. yeah nice. West Sider. Okay. West Side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. West Side. Well, side, you know. better side for running, in my opinion. <laughs> Sedgwick County Park, Prairie Sunset Trail, both great places there to you run. Go, yeah. So, yeah. East Side, they got some places to run too, but I just prefer the West Side. Prefer the West Side. That's yeah. right. West Side, Best Side. That's yeah. right. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Yeah, you got the zoo over there too, and everything. That's right. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, no. Take a dub as an East Sider. I am. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. I guess technically I am too. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you're an East campus. Sider. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just I like to say West Side, yeah, Best yeah. Side. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's really all it is. But yeah, nice. no, that's cool. So if anybody is like interested in getting into like one of these running clubs, like yes. how how does that do? They just show up, or so um, yeah. With Run Wichita, you just show up uh, for any of the group stuff. But I also want to shout out another running group in town called TJ's Running. So they, um, so if you're really new to running and you want to start from the most basics of P- and people who are focused on helping you from the basics, TJ Running is the way to go because it's a group that's fully focused on, you know, taking people who have no background in running whatsoever and making them, you know, getting them to the first 5K or just getting them to finish the first mile or whatever they need to do. That's what these guys are focused on, all the way up to marathon. They help people go all the way, but they are very focused on helping the newest of people get into running. So if you're really inexperienced, TJ's running is the way to go, okay. and you can find them on Run Sign Up, and also they got a Facebook page too. So I'll look them up on there if you're looking for uh, if if you're brand new. For if you got level. a little bit more experience, Run Wichita. It's 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 a. Uh, Less co- less coaching side to it, more of a community side to it. 
so yeah, you just look them up on their on their website or Facebook page and show up. Just show up to their events. And yeah, yeah, you'll be immediately embraced. Somebody's awesome. gonna realize they don't recognize you and they're gonna ask you a question. You know, start talking to you and getting to know you. Yeah, that's great. But then there's also my shops group runs every Wednesday, six p.m., which is once again just show up and join us. So we go for a four mile casual run. Some people call it early at two miles and yeah, branch off. But we just keep it nice, slow, and social, and try to accommodate anybody who shows up. And yeah, it's a good time. We do half price smoothies afterwards. So people Ooh, hang there out. You go. There, there you go. Hang That's, out. That's bonus free. content there right go. there. That's we're bonus sold. content okay. right there. Here we go. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just be on the two mile crew that just quits halfway. But yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Might as well. As long as you get like out it. there, as long as you get out there moving and absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. absolutely. All about it. But yeah, those have been it's been fun watching my our Wednesday group runs evolve over time because for a long time it's just the same four of us running together every day, which we had a blast in those days. Mm-hmm. But now it's new people every week and so oh, that's it's, awesome. Yes. Yeah. That's fun too, in a different way. Great yeah. to see it grow. Yeah, have oh, you saw? Yeah. You seen some sales increase from that too, or is it oh, just yeah. like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice? Definitely nice. has that positive feedback. Back. There you yeah. go. There you go. Can't yeah. complain about that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of touched base about it, but can you uh, talk a little bit more about the smoothie shop that you yeah. have there too? Yeah. So we got the smoothie. So I started the smoothie shop because I figure everybody's buying everything online these days. Mm-hmm. Gotta draw people into the shop somehow. Gotta draw them. You can't mm-hmm. buy a smoothie online. Got to come in. So uh, we did the smoothie shop. Uh, it's just to accommodate the types of smoothies. It's supposed to just be good for you, healthy. You know, it's a running atmosphere. You need healthy stuff. So we mm-hmm. got two styles mostly. We got our, what I call my pre-run and my post-runs or my yeah. just totally smoothie, fruity, you know, um, tropical type sure. ones that are, are great for just getting your energy levels up. Mm-hmm. And then I got my protein-based ones. Sweet macros Great on for those. Recovery. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pump up yeah. those protein numbers, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. The runners need a lot of, they need a lot of protein. Oh, so. yeah. They, yeah, they yeah, need yeah. as much as anyone. They just don't, they just don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> runners, runners don't think about the nutrition side as much mm. as they should. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you're there to bring it with yeah. them with some delicious tasting yeah, smoothies. Right. I'm hoping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They are well, delicious. I mean, oh, you they can, are you delicious. can endorse yes. delicious. Okay, yeah. Without okay. a doubt, they are the best smoothies you're going to find. All right. Yeah. That's okay. good. We'll have to test that I out. I think so. Bonus content. I think so. I think, I think so. We'll, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited, yeah. especially with that confidence level yeah. you just showed. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and all fruit and smoothies are just real ingredients, you know. We put real mangoes in. There you go. with, you know, we break it down with a little bit of juices because you got to have something to break it down with. But it's just... Real fruits. How much and red then, 40 do you put in there? I'm kind oh, of a fan. I, bottles of it. <laughs> <laughs> you just dump it out. <laughs> Got to make it look all red and nice. Yeah, the only, the only like powder thing we put in there was being like whey protein. Cause, oh, yeah. Because yeah, you got to get that, get that protein, protein yeah, somehow. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Otherwise, for sure, yeah. real nuts, real fruits, you know, that kind of stuff. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to try it. Yeah. I'm excited to try it. We're going to have to. Yeah, is there any other like... I don't, I don't, I guess I don't want to ask again about like the future of the shop, but is there any like plans for like maybe new flavors, maybe new oh, smoothies, yeah. different, different food items? Yeah. Always playing around with uh, new flavors just mm-hmm. whenever we get an inspiration or every so often we occasionally will do monthly spe- special ones. Yeah. So we just had a, we just created a new one recently called the turtle trotter. The and turtle it's trotter. Well, yeah. Ooh, you know, te- I, fi- I finally, caramel. yeah, I finally dug into my Freddy's background with that. Hey, there, there we go. go. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I knew, yes, I knew yes, you were yes, lying yes, about yes. that. <laughs> I knew you were lying about that. There was definitely some inspiration from Freddy's. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. that smoothie for sure. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a caramel pecan, um, uh, chocolate vanilla protein. Yeah, good stuff. So yeah. probably the probably the least healthy on the menu, but <laughs> feel delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta make yeah. some sacrifices here. Yeah, that's right. You know, if if you're going for a long run and coming you back for a total trial, you, you <laughs> yeah. earned it. Yeah, you earned it. Yeah, you earned it. Absolutely. You'll earn it after your two miles. Even, you know? even <laughs> if you quit after two <laughs> miles, and just be lying straight to the smoothie shop. <laughs> you still did a little bit, so yeah, I might have to I might have to indulge yeah. <laughs> for sure. But yeah, no, that's cool. I wanna, I don't know what like the best. Um, I guess if you had more advice on this. And maybe possibly incorporating into the shop of like what to eat before and after runs, because like I, when I do it, 
I and I don't run yeah, often. Like you, let's let's, let's be clear do, about yeah, this. Like you, I don't do that yeah. often. But then I just want to get some Freddies afterwards. You mm-hmm. know, that wasn't trying to play on anything there. But <laughs> you know, I I, I just want to eat like really unhealthy. So what am I supposed to do after that? Uh, after, and after. after a run, I mean, once again, everybody is so different, and the goals are so different that. Mm-hmm. It, it's not a one size fits all type answer. And this is why I tell people all the time with everything I talk about with running, no one size fits all answer. So mm-hmm. some people, they're running because they're trying to, you know, be healthy or maybe drop a few pounds or something. So what their need after a run is going to be very different than somebody who's trying to become, you know, who's chasing a, a Boston qualifying time or something mm-hmm. like that. So honestly, protein's always good. Yeah. And for most people, the best, the best protein for what I when I hear when I talk to runners, everybody's favorite protein. Not everybody, a lot of people's favorite protein is just chocolate milk. Chocolate milk mm-hmm. gets your energy Simple back up. Yeah, yeah. It's got it's got the protein you need. It's got other great nutrition too. So, chocolate milk's the way to go. Chocolate milk's the opinion. way to go. You're but, here. you know, once again, everybody's got different needs. Everybody's got different goals. So, yeah. it depends on your needs. Depends on your goals. To determine what's best for you. Yeah, that's a tr- that, and that's a true like that's an expert yeah. like mm-hmm. answer because you because a lot of times people ask generic questions like that and it's <laughs> kind of like what well, you can't just give like a one size fits all yeah. like, in everything yeah. so everybody's different so that yeah so we were testing you in your okay, past yeah, right. so <laughs> yeah. oh I was trying to trap you there yep. so you would say turkey sandwiches or something very niche like that <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah no. What it really actually ends up being the bigger struggle for a lot of runners is figuring out nutrition during the run. Because when you, oh yeah, when a lot of people start off, they start very low distances. But when you start to pick up to the point where you like marathon training, or yeah. some people half marathon training, you come, a, you end up in this place where you what they call bonking or hitting the wall. And I don't think most people know what that is. Bonking, yeah, bonking. That's yeah. nice. So a lot of people know these terms, but they don't know actually what it is. And what that is is glycogen depletion, depletion from your muscles. Okay. Because you can only hold about two hours worth of glycogen in your muscles if you're putting forth a real continuous effort. Mm-hmm. Your body will use it all, which is all the carbs basically got stored. And when you use that all up, you bonk or hit the wall, which is, is this massive drain of energy where you feel like you're dying. Mm. So... Trying to figure out how to prevent that from happening is the real key to running nutrition. And so fueling that is, is a big part of running. And that is, yeah. yeah. That's something that's really, like, I feel like overlooked a lot in runners, yeah. especially beginner runners mm-hmm. and everything. Because mm-hmm. I remember when I ran my first half, mm-hmm. and I did a trail run, too, so it was extra difficult. And I'm used to not, like, eating or not even really drinking mm-hmm. when I run. Mm-hmm. And I remember as I was doing it, I like hit that wall yeah. and I was just like totally in, bonked out. Yeah, totally bonked yeah, out. Yeah. And then I got some stuff, but then like for the rest of the of the day yes. I was just like just drained. Yeah, and if, we, mm. if you hit that point, yeah, you don't fully bounce back from it really. Unless, no. So you just want to stave it off and getting the nutrition in during the run before that hits is important for sure. Yeah. So that's why you see those like goo energy gels. That's, that's, what, I was, like that's that. what I was thinking. Yeah. That's sugar. Glycogen sugar. Basically, yeah, just yeah, carbs. Yeah. Carbs. There you glucose, go. Glucose, glucose. Yep. All the coses. Yep. <laughs> nice. Good stuff. Yeah. What do you what do you tell the Wichita run community when they uh, have to go number two during the run because they forgot to go beforehand? Is there is there a fixer for that? Just go. Just <laughs> adult diapers. Quick trip. Quick trip. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I don't know if there was like a there's like a pill for that too or not. <laughs> if you can take any I'm coast, sure there is, but I'm not blue with it. All right. yeah. That's the next uh, section of your story. You yeah. get some experimental yeah. drugs in there. That would be wild. I actually recently had a post collegiate athlete whose experience was with the five K who's yeah. about to take on the half marathon asking me those exact questions and all Seriously? I, yeah, and all I told him is don't just don't test it on race day. <laughs> Figure Go it out beforehand. Me. That's funny. <laughs> Post collegiate, he would know that by now. Come on. Well, well, that's the thing. He he was worried about the longer amount of time he's gonna be running because he's gonna be doing a half marathon, oh, okay. and he's used to five Ks, gotcha, gotcha. Ks. Okay. So he was like, "I'm gonna be running longer. I might run into this issue." <laughs> so he was asking me how to. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your experimental <laughs> drugs? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Go. I was like, "Yeah, you try it. Just." Test it, test it in your training run. Test it <laughs> you never know what your body's going to say to that. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Well, 
that's inspirational <laughs> to think about, you know, those types of things. And is, is it though? No, it's not. I'm just trying to segue like, here. I was like, that's All I'm trying to do is segue poor, here. I'm sorry to have to call you out, but that was a very poor segue. <laughs> what we're trying to do is segue into the inspirational component of our podcast where we ask you, your Mount Rushmore of inspiration, some of the the four people that have inspired you uh, to where you're at today, those could be um, personal people that you know, maybe some icons. Mm, yeah. Uh, and this is just a just free you, question yeah. for you to answer now. So, Well, as far as on the running side of things, uh, what, yeah, what, um, you know, obviously growing up, I was always obsessed with the history of, of who we mentioned earlier, Jim Ryan, just a local legend, you know, doing those setting those world records in one of the funnest races there is. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's from Wichita just really inspires. If you ever want to go run the paths he trained on, just go out to College Hill and run in that neighborhood, and you'll be training the same paths. There you a go. Mile world record trained That's trained on. Yeah. cool to think yeah. about. Nice. Yeah, and then so, you know, obviously it's got to be up there. Um, you know, my old high school coach was definitely an inspiration to me. Give him a shout-out, Fernando Martinez. He's, he's won Prairie Fire Marathon a few times back in his day. Yeah. Nice. So he's definitely definitely up there as an inspiration. Yeah. Grew your passion. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. For sure. Of course, as far as opening the store goes, you know, probably wouldn't have done it if I didn't see it done by somebody I knew before me, that being Kevin Swinicky, who opened Go Run. I don't mm -hmm. know if you okay. guys remember that shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a local shop that eventually got bought out by Fleet Feet, but... <laughs> It was great back in the days when it was Go Run. Since since those days have ended, it's kind of drifted, in my opinion, mm -hmm. from how cool it once was. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, so those are some of those some of those. And then I'd say also just old high school teammates always inspire me. Guys mm -hmm. like, you know, guess, guess I'll give a shout to one of my old teammates named Scott Effort, who there you go. Year ahead of me in school, and I always just looked up to him as a runner. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So got to have those peers to yeah, push you on. That's right. It's always good to look at the old legends, the current legends, and the, your peers who are just right there with you. And that's yeah. a great, that's a good, that's a yeah, great Mount Rushmore yeah, you got yeah, there. Yeah. Good stuff. Good mix. Very solid, yeah. For sure, yeah. We'll have to post that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Find all their faces, <laughs> faces on and, yeah, Facebook. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for next season. But <laughs> Other inspiring things right now, though, is definitely what's going on right now in the world with the Olympics. Yeah. yeah. Really fun races to watch. Yeah, which ones have you been yeah. keying in on? Uh, obviously, as, as a runner, I've been watching all the athletics. I mean, I've watched other events too, but the athletics, the men's 1500 is, was definitely up there. Didn't That's USA what. just get an upset in there? Yeah, mm -hmm. so it, it was. So this race has been hyped for like two years now. Yeah. Um, maybe even three. Because uh, two guys, the Norwegian, J Jacob Ingelbrechtsen, or Jacob, I guess how you say Jacob. it. Jacob. Jacob Ingelbrechtsen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the British, uh, Scottish guy. Uh, Josh Kerr had been just beefing it out on social media, <laughs> press <laughs> race interviews. Um, and it's just been all hype because these guys, the world record is going to fall before too long by one of these mm -hmm. current top mile 1500 guys in the mile in the 1500. It's going to fall soon with these guys going mm -hmm. after it. But all the beef has had everybody fired up about which one's going to win at the Olympics. Jacob was the favorite. Josh Kerr was definitely... Uh, an exciting part of it too, and then when it came to the actual Olympic fifteen hundred, Americans uh, Hawker ended up taking gold, passing both those guys. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's so beautiful. We, we snagged the gold, mm -hmm. and we also snagged the bronze. Jacob ended up getting fourth because really? Yard and the Goose ended up taking the bronze. So that's another crazy. awesome American. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy that I feel like running is not a sport I would expect beefs with. Yeah. Did not know that well, backstory. That's interesting. It's actually awesome. Everybody loves the fact that they are beefing because it's not normally a sport those beef in. <laughs> yeah. So it's making this sport more fun. A lot more exciting for sure. So we got that beef going on, and then you also got in the 100 meter dash, you got Noah Lyles yeah. beefing mm -hmm. with the NBA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the entire NBA. World yeah. champions of what? what? Exactly. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, I love Noah Lyle's personality. That guy's fun. Yeah, he is a fun and he, guy. And he got that awesome photo finish win, too, at the mm -hmm. Olympics for Team USA. Definitely. So that was Definitely. awesome yeah. as well. He, he did forget to bring the home gold in 200, though, because I yeah. think that was his event. Yeah, 200 is his specialty, but he's got he had COVID for it. Oh, really? He ran okay. it with COVID, yeah. Jeez. Crazy. That's, yeah. Yeah. They, they, to they took him off the track in a wheelchair. <laughs> Are you kidding? Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. I did not I was not paying attention. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's wild. 
Yeah, crazy <laughs> running going on yeah. right now. Crazy. But yeah. So, yeah, so so much cool stuff. It, USA is also snagging medals in places we don't normally like. We got the we got the bronze in the ten thousand meter, I, yeah. which that race is usually dominated by the Kenyans, Ethiopians, Ugandans. So yeah, that snagging that bronze was fun. Yeah, yeah. no, that was crazy. There, was, there was one person who didn't look like the rest. There, he, could, <laughs> oh, yeah. he was like, okay, good for him, yeah. good for him. Yeah, he snuck in from the back to get it too. So yeah, yeah those are those are fun to watch. Yeah, it was a physical race too. Those guys were throwing elbows yeah. and all kinds of stuff. That men's race and the women's five thousand. Strong elbows thrown around. <laughs> Strong <laughs> elbows. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah, I would not want to take place in that. Yeah. That'd probably be the only aspect of the running I could get good at. <laughs> yeah, it was just throwing those elbows. <laughs> <laughs> keeping the inside lane, you know. Yeah. That's probably it. I take yeah. inspiration from Lightning McQueen on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so no lies. You see that tongue he stuck out to get that mm. photo finish win? Did he really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. That's he awesome. He had his tongue out when he crossed the finish line. <laughs> I know where he took that from. Cars won all day, oh all day to tie, yeah. tie with Chick Hicks and the King himself. So oh, yeah. that was mm, mm, just getting me in nostalgia lane right now. <laughs> but yeah, we got also, you know, uh, I, I I lost my train of thought for a second. Sorry, <laughs> we just we got were, talking about cars. Yeah, I, I just start, oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> wow. <So weird. laughs> Oh, sorry. Anyways, we have another segment to do. <laughs> you want to do it, Devin? <laughs> so we have another segment that we like to do, and it's called This or That. And so okay. with this, you get two options, and you pick one. Okay. And so it'll be just about things running related. Okay. Related. So just, yeah. So um, so with this, we'll go ahead and get started mm -hmm. with what would you prefer Sprints or long distance? Long distance. Long day. distance. Okay. Dude, uh, sprints just I don't know. There's something mentally I just can't I just can't keep myself going. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, what would you classify as long distance? Because that's yeah, another good question. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a I think that's a great question because everybody definitely everybody definitely has a different definition for that one. So I actually my my history goes back into the ultra marathoning scene, so ooh, so yeah. So long distance for me tends to be, I'd say half marathon on up, but yeah, my longest races have gone as far as a hundred miles, so Jeez. that's what I really call distance. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'd say half marathon is the real is where distance really <laughs> takes off. Everything below that I call middle distance. There or, you go. Yeah. Or okay. sprints. Okay. Okay. All right. So, what about uh, trail or street running? Oh, they both have their ups and downs. In Wichita, I have to say street, just because Wichita's trails just are, are poor. Yeah, we we got to do better. Our nah. city's got to do better. All right. Yeah. Bring it but, up with the mayor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I know the mountain biking community is doing a lot to help try to fix that, but it's still, even all the trails that are getting built are still 30 minutes from the core of the city. But, yeah, I love trail, but in Wichita, I, I, I embrace the streets. Embrace the streets. <laughs> all right, we're putting that as our title. Yeah, right. Embrace the streets with Andrew. All right, I think we know the answer to this next one. But we'll go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and ask it. <laughs> Interval or a fart lick? Oh, Farlick. Of there you go. There you go. Good. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good deal. All right. So, kind of talking about shoes, mm -hmm. you personally are you more of a, a minimalist or stability? Um, okay. So, I wouldn't really split the two categories that way. I'll, I'll split it more. Split it more. Uh, minimalist or supports. So, stability has to do with correcting pronation. That's a niche group of people who need that. It's not, it's not the preference. That's actually a need for some people. Okay. Oh, but whether it be high cushion support or minimalist, I'm definitely minimalist. I okay. like to feel my, my feel my feet pushing off the ground. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the minority though. Most people want that want that cushion, but I love the low, the low cushion shoes. I even carry the Zero brand at my shop, which is a no cushion shoe that rolls oh. up. Yeah. It's like those toe shoes where you have individual... The toe shoes without the toes. Yeah. Okay. The toe shoes go. are kind of dead because of some bad scientific claims they made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look a little interesting. Yeah. yeah. I had a track coach that always wore them, and we would yeah. always just kind of look at them and like, 
Yeah, which minimalist shoes are great. They get people in trouble, though, when they try to go too hard, too fast into them mm. when the body's not ready for it. Ah. But yeah, I'm more minimalist. There you, go. Yeah. there you go. Okay. Well, speaking of shoes, we'll go ahead and go into a few brands and see mm-hmm. what's your personal preference. You know? um, so would you go with Brooks or Asics? Those are both... T- Two great brands. If you're looking for cushion, you go Asics. If you're looking for responsiveness, you go Brooks. Brooks is my go-to because, once again, I like the more minimalist stuff. Mm-hmm. But Asics has the best foam on the market right now. There you go. They're, they got the most cushiony, best-feeling shoes. Yeah. Okay. But Let's keep that I like responsive shoes, so I go Brooks. Okay. All right. What about Hoka or On? Okay. So both brands who refuse to come to my shop... <laughs> Neither yeah, of them. Right? So t- okay. <laughs> but uh, that's because they're both too big for their own britches right now. They grew really fast, really yeah, suddenly. So, mm-hmm. so they're not so they're not working with small companies gotcha. or focus on big companies. Okay. But it, between those two, I definitely think Hoka's doing the better of the two. Mm. Just because on they got a sort of look that they like to have, mm-hmm. and it takes away from the actual ability to make a good performing sure. shoe. Uh, you know, Hoka, they're more focused on making the good performing shoes. However, we'll see how long Hoka holds on to that because they've, they've cut their R&D quite a bit. So mm. hopefully. Well, speaking of R&D on the on shoes, have you seen the new uh, like spray on shoes that they made? By on? Yeah. No, I haven't. No, seen there's that. some ridiculous stuff that they yeah. made. Yeah, where they put a last on a like a robot arm, and then they just spray on. Like, and it's a really cool process. Okay. I I saw this on LinkedIn the other day. I might have really? sent it to you. Yeah, yeah. but um, it's cool stuff. I would go on in that situation <laughs> just because I saw that. <laughs> just because I saw that. Because the R and D is important. Yeah. It, yeah, if, if and I know On is definitely doing some good things still, uh, yeah. regardless of the newer shoes like the Cloud Monster. I've been hearing a lot of good things about, which is yeah. their superish type shoe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think I, you know we're, we're talking about Swiss, Swiss and French brands. I prefer my American brands too. America, baby, that's right. <laughs> so give a shout to Saucony okay. and Brooks for there that you one. Go. There New you go. New Balance, you know those Amen. brands. Yeah. Let's go. All right. And then last one will be kind of more of like, I would say more general, like big, big names, Mm -hmm. Nike or Adidas. Great question. Um, So once again, this is going to be a split answer. If you want the best performance shoes on the market, the best shoes at energy return, you're going to want to go Nike because the vapor flies and alpha flies Mm -hmm. are unbeatable. But they're also the least sustainable shoes ever made. <laughs> like those things are not built to last. They're not. They're not environmentally friendly. But they are the best performance shoes, hands down. Adidas, if you're looking for just something a little sturdier, but still a great shoe, would be the way mm-hmm. to go. There you yeah. go. Mm-hmm. Now I know. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. That's so great. once again, just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And we were coming in here looking for a great conversation right. about. <laughs> Wichita running community about Fartlex, and I think we got that. Yes. So, yeah. thank you so much. I'm glad for you guys on. had me on. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Time. This yeah. is great in the new studio too. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, this Not place new, is but awesome. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Shocker <laughs> Studios. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Cool. So, if people want to contact you, they want to get more information about getting shoes, mm-hmm. maybe running the smoothies. What's the best way to reach for them to reach you? Easiest way is to stop into the shop. 535 West Douglas, down in Delano, between the river and the roundabout, right next to Milk Float. That's the easiest way. Just come in, talk to me. I'm there 85% of the time when it's open. (laughs) So you can usually get a hold of me directly, but my staff will also be able to pass it along. If not, uh, if you can't get into the shop, you can call the shop. I don't know my shop's number off the top of my head, honestly. (laughs) Uh, Social media, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Fartlicks and Fartlicks ICT are the names for the social media accounts so you can contact me on there too and but yeah any questions anybody has and help they need i'm be willing to work with them yep. so, all right awesome. great deal yep. yeah well yeah once again thank you so much for coming on definitely and we look forward to making some bonus content all right yes. in the future. For it. yes yes yeah. and thank you for tuning in to this episode of turtleneck table talks make sure and hit that subscribe and that like button and uh tune in as we continue on with our season two where we're highlighting the future of wichita